Hmm. Okay, well now at last we get to actually doing the calculation after all the stupid graph stuff. Well, there are a few pieces of advice I can give you here. The main one is to leave calculations in the form of algebra. Don't substitute in numbers until you have to right at the end. Why? Well, I find that students in this class generally substitute numbers in right away. The trouble with that is it's much harder to check your answer. We'll talk about that later. And also, odds are, let's say your boss has told you, let's calculate something. You go and calculate it, give them the answer. Usually, nine times out of ten, they come back the next day and say, oh, could you do the calculation again, but just assume it's a bit heavier or a bit more expensive or something like that. If you've got your answer in the form of algebra, that means you don't have to redo the whole calculation. You can just plug in the new numbers and get the new answer. Whereas if you start substituted numbers in right at the beginning, you're going to have to do the whole thing all over again. Just to make it clear what I'm talking about, let's imagine we've got a ball of mass 2 kilograms thrown upwards at 20 meters per second. How high does it get? Well, here is the bad way to do it. You'd say, okay, we're actually going to uh, we'll say that um, potential energy, mgh, 2 times g times h equals kinetic energy, half times the mass, which is 2, times the speed, which is 20 squared. So rearranging, we find that h equals 20 squared over 2 times 9.8 equals 20.4 meters. Now that's correct answer, but the trouble is if you now want to go back and do it for a, a different speed uh, or a different weight or something like that, it won't work. You have to do it all over from scratch again. And also when you've got your answer here, it's hard to check. How do you know that's right? It's just a bunch of numbers. It's also very hard for anybody else to understand. I could see 9.8 and think, oh, that must be G, but what's 20? It's, it's hard to comprehend for the people marking it. And when you do a real calculation, usually you have to explain it to somebody else. So how to do it correctly? Good. We'll define variables. We'll have mass equals 2 kilograms, velocity equals... 20 meters per second. Use energy conservation, so explain what you're doing. So we've got mgh equals half mv squared. Cancel the masses, rearrange, we get h equals v squared over 2g. And now we substitute in the numbers equals 20 squared over 2 times 9.8 equals 20.4 meters. Benefit of this? It's much easier to understand. When you come back to it a year from now and want to see what you were doing, you can understand this. Good luck on understanding that one. If you need to redo it for a new velocity or a new mass, well, you can see right away the mass is cancelled out, so it makes no difference. For a new velocity or g, doing it on the moon or something, you can do it right away. And you have lots of ways of checking the answer because you have an equation here. And we'll see some of those methods like functional forms and units and dimensions later. So, wherever possible, try and do a calculation in the form of algebra. Define your variables. Do everything in the form of algebra and only substitute numbers in at the end. Don't substitute the numbers in to begin with.